the five best luxury hotels on the Las Vegas Strip. I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. This is a part of my series of Las Vegas travel videos. It's actually kind of a sequel to my video on the five worst cheap hotels on the Las Vegas Strip. I thought I would do one about what's great to stay and not just the ones that are awful to stay. But if you want to check out some more of my videos on Vegas, you'll find links in the description below or at the end of this video. Las Vegas has a staggering number and variety of hotels to choose from. You want to stay in Venice, Italy? They got that. You want to stay in Paris, France? They got that. New York City? They've got that too. Uh, but in this video, when I'm talking about luxury, none of these hotels are going to be cheap. The cheapest here probably starts at $200 on a good night and goes up from that. And how did I pick the top five? Well, based on TripAdvisor rankings and also my own experiences in a lot of these hotels. Those two combined gives us the top five. There will be a few honorable mentions before we get to number one as well. We'll start with number five and work our way down to number one. The fifth best luxury hotel on the Las Vegas Strip goes to the Four Seasons Hotel and the Delano Hotel. Chris, I'm confused. Why are two hotels in the number five spot? Actually, you're gonna find I'm gonna do this quite a bit in this list because both of these hotels, the Four Seasons and the Delano, are in the Mandalay Bay complex. The Mandalay Bay, that big gold tower right there behind me, well, the Four Seasons, it's the 35th to the 39th floor of the Mandalay Bay. And then the Delano, it's a separate tower next to the Mandalay Bay. Collectively, these two hotels get 8,000 reviews on TripAdvisor and people love them. When you arrive at the Four Seasons Valet, it feels hard to believe this hotel can be in Vegas, let alone connected to the Mandalay Bay. It's a gaming-free sanctuary and it's the southernmost hotel on the main part of the Las Vegas Strip. The Four Seasons Hotel has its own lobby, two of its own restaurants, Charlie Palmer Steak and the Veranda. It has its own swimming pool, its own spa. Basically, it has a lot of its own things, but it's connected to the Mandalay Bay Casino and all the things the Mandalay Bay has to offer. So if you also want to access the big Mandalay Bay pool, you can do that as well. The con for the Four Seasons, it's 100% valet parking, which is why I prefer the Delano, which is that big tower on the side of Mandalay Bay. And what I like about the Delano is it's directly connected to the Mandalay Bay's parking garage. So you can park your car and it's a really short walk to actually get into the hotel. The Delano has 1,117 rooms and it's for guests or travelers that want a quiet retreat but still near Vegas hustle and bustle. The Delano is a prime pick. At the Delano, they've tried to take elements of the desert and incorporate them into a breezy hotel to make you feel like you're right by the beach. The views from the rooms are spectacular. The biggest cons of both of these hotels is the south location. They are really far from everything else on the Strip. Though there is a tram that'll take you from the Mandalay Bay to the Excalibur, and then you're kind of close to the action. The fourth best luxury hotel on the Las Vegas Strip is Caesars Palace. On TripAdvisor, this has 14,000 reviews, four and a half stars. Caesars Palace, it is center strip. It doesn't get any more center strip than this. And I think Caesars Palace, it has this great Roman theme, and it's one of the few older hotels on the Strip that has managed to actually stay nice and luxurious. They've kept remodeling it, they've been updating things, they've been building new towers. I think some of the nicest rooms are in the Augustus and Octavius Towers. They've got their own entrance off of Flamingo Road, and so you don't have to go through the casino to get in there. Caesars Palace has lots of high-end restaurants, but if you want extra high-end, even more high-end rooms, I don't know if you can see the sign, but in this building right here is the Nobu Hotel. It's another one of these hotel within a hotel kinds of things, a boutique hotel, but that's the highest end part of Caesars Palace. Caesars Palace is also a great place for shopping. They have a large shopping mall known as the Forum Shops. It has 270 stores occupying 636,000 square feet. And in fact, this shopping mall is the highest grossing shopping mall per square foot of any shopping mall in the United States. And if you don't want to shop, it's worth a visit just to ride on the curved escalators. You don't see those every day. Next up, coming in at number three, we've got the Bellagio Hotel. The Bellagio is a classic. 15,000 reviews on TripAdvisor, four and a half stars. What I love about the Bellagio is it has a classic Vegas feel, but not classic and run down like the downtown hotels. Classic and upscale at the same time. It's on a huge property. It's 67 acres. It's got a big pool complex and of course it's got 
the iconic fountain show that's in front. The Bellagio, truly amazing. One of the highlights of the Bellagio is the conservatory. This little kind of greenhouse section with the glass roof always has lots of neat plants and displays and it changes multiple times throughout the year. So whether you're staying at the Bellagio or not, you should definitely check out the conservatory. And there's a garden store next door so you can pick up souvenirs of the garden variety. For this particular display in the conservatory, they've got two swans. They're actually animatronic and they move. Each one is made of 10,000 feathers. That tells you the detail that goes into these exhibits. The second best luxury hotel on the Las Vegas Strip is the Wynn and the Encore. Collectively, these two hotels have 35,000 reviews on TripAdvisor, four and a half stars. The Wynn opened in 2005. Between the two of the hotels, they have about 4,700 rooms. And what makes the Wynn just amazing is how they've kind of taken floral and plants and put them everywhere. I mean, when you walk into the Wynn, it feels like you've stepped off the strip into an alternate floral universe. It is a great place to get away from the hustle and bustle of the Las Vegas Strip. It feels very relaxed inside the Wynn. It also probably helps that the Wynn is one of the largest grounds of the Las Vegas hotels. It is on 215 acres. It has its own golf course that's part of the property. The rooms at the Wynn start at 600 square feet and they are also described as very red. The Wynn is also home to one of Las Vegas's premier pool clubs, the Encore Beach Club, if you are a pool club goer, you will like the Encore. The biggest con about the Wynn and the Encore is its location. It's not quite the center of the Strip. It's sort of on the northern part of the Strip. It's across from the Fashion Show Mall right there and directly next to the Venetian and the Palazzo. But going north from here, there's pretty much nothing right now. There's new hotels under construction, but they've been under construction for a long time. And it's a long haul to like the Circus Circus and then the Stratosphere, which are the next hotels that way. But before I get to number one, just a few honorable mentions that I couldn't leave out. The first honorable mention are the Sky Suites atop the Aria Hotel. There's 442 rooms at the top of this hotel, the Aria, that are their ultra premium, super luxury rooms. They start at $700 and go up to $7,000. The smallest room is 1,000 square feet going up to 7,000 square feet. These rooms are bigger than my house. If you've got the cash and that doesn't seem like too much money, then definitely consider the Aria. It has a great location, center strip, and great views from the Sky Suites all the way at the top. The second honorable mention goes to another hotel in the same city center complex. This one is the Mandarin Oriental. It's tucked away down there at the bottom. You can see there's the little hotel logo right there. It's that fan and uh, it's this whole building right here. But the Mandarin Oriental is famous for having excellent service, some of the best service in Las Vegas. There's also no casino at all, so you can go in and get to your room pretty quick. Don't have to deal with slot machines, dealers, cigarette smoke, all that stuff. The only reason it didn't make the top five is it's becoming a Waldorf Astoria in a month or two and so I'm not sure how it's going to change with the change to a different chain but it's worth considering Waldorf Astoria might continue the great tradition of the Mandarin Oriental. The third honorable mention goes to the Cosmopolitan Hotel. This one right here it's also located pretty much center strip just right next to the city center complex. It is currently the only Marriott affiliated hotel on the strip. The Cosmopolitan caters to the younger demographic it's known for having some of the best restaurants in the city, though on the trendy younger side. And many of the rooms actually have balconies too. A lot of Vegas hotels don't have balconies, so if you want a balcony, consider the Cosmopolitan. One final honorable mention before we get on to number one, and this one's at the MGM Grand. If the Sky Suites at the Aria were not high-end enough for you, check out the Sky Lofts at the MGM Grand. It's about 50 boutique suites that they have. They're dual-level lofts to be made feel like a Manhattan loft. These rooms start at $1,000 a night. The smallest room is 1,400 square feet, and each one of them at the MGM Skylofts comes with a private butler. 
and now the number one best luxury hotel on the Las Vegas Strip. Drum roll, please. Well, you've probably already guessed it because you've got the theme, which is I always stand in front of it, but it's the Venetian and the Palazzo. These two hotels connected together form the world's second largest hotel complex with over 7,000 rooms. These two hotels together on TripAdvisor have 45,000 reviews, four and a half stars. The Venetian originally opened in 1999. The Palazzo opened later, but together they have this great theme of Venice, Italy. They've got canals, they've got gondolas, they've got a great recreation of St. Mark's Square. I mean, I just love the theme of this hotel. Uh, it is also the world's second largest casino, in addition to being the second largest hotel. The only casino larger than this one, it's the Venetian in Macau in China. The rooms here, they range from $179 a night in the low season up to $10,000. But what I like about the room in the Venetian is that they're basically all suites. They have a living room and a bedroom, big rooms. The standard rooms of the Venetian start at 650 square feet. They're among the largest on the strip. They have floor to ceiling windows, a king size pillow top bed dressed in Egyptian cotton sheets. The most memorable thing about the Venetian is its huge array of restaurants. You can find everything inside. There's even more restaurants at the Venetian than at the Caesars Palace. It feels like an entire city inside of a hotel. It's great for people who want to go to Vegas and plant themselves in one place. And if you like nightclubs, it's home to the Tao Nightclub, which is a Asian themed nightclub and it's one of Vegas's most popular. The Palazzo is the extravagant younger sibling of the Venetian. The rooms at the Palazzo are a bit bigger. They start at 720 square feet and it's based on the same kind of Renaissance Italian aesthetic. The Palazzo is a little bit more modern, but it's still reminiscent of classic Italy. And I also like that you can get from the parking garage to your your room without having to go through a casino. Oh, and did I mention the theming? I love the whole uh, Venice, Italy shopping area. I mean, it's a little bit cheesy, but frankly, I think it's the best well done theme of any of the Las Vegas hotels. Well, there you have it. The best luxury hotels on the Las Vegas Strip. If you enjoy this video, I guarantee you'll enjoy some of the other videos from my Las Vegas series or your money back. You can click here, here to watch them. Find links in the description below. Or if this was your first time here, you might want to consider subscribing for new fun, informative travel videos every week. Well, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in the next video.